My talk today was focused on artificial intelligence, some unique applications uh, of this technology in ophthalmology and multiple subspecialties, both in the domains of clinical care, education, and also research. I have the privilege of talking a little bit about uh, some of our Wilmer faculty projects uh, in artificial intelligence. Uh, I will say that this represents just the tip of the iceberg in terms of project opportunities. So AI is used primarily for diagnostics at the moment, and so we're looking at really high volume imaging that's being done, particularly in our our vitreo retinal surgery clinic, uh, also our cataract cornea clinic, and also uh, our glaucoma clinic and other specialties that have really a, a demand that can't be met by traditional imaging means. And we're looking at AI as a solution to bridge the gap between patient access and also quality of care. In neuro-ophthalmology, you know, there's a number of conditions where, you know, minutes and hours matter. And so to find the proverbial needle in the haystack, our neuro-ophthalmology team, so headed by Dr. Neil Miller, uh, is collaborating with Dr. Liu again to identify opportunities to look at optic disc abnormalities and the settings that are most targeted for this intervention would be the emergency department where we found a large share of our, our ophthalmic you know, presentations are non-emergent so it is even more critical to find those that are and also the primary care setting. So I think grading of age-related macular degeneration historically you had to have a skilled vitreo retinal specialist spend about 20 mi minutes or so per image in order to get a good read and assessment on the quality of the image and the staging of that disease. Now artificial intelligence through deep learning techniques are able to replicate that in a much more uh, quick fashion and also with a degree of precision that replicates that of human environments. In, in practical reality, uh, there's not a whole lot of experts who, who take the time to do this, but the algorithm that they've developed is able to achieve this grading uh, within a, a fraction of a second compared to 20 minutes or more for an experienced expert. So a lot of promise there. So I think the prospect is additional patients would be able to gain access to care that's currently unmet. I think we would also see um, an improvement in terms of timeliness of access and also diagnostics. A number of patients also don't present present uh, to the Wilmer clinics uh, until they have a symptom or a manifestation of disease. By embedding some of these technologies in the primary care setting, there may be an opportunity to actually defer need for ophthalmic care, which from a system standpoint could save uh, healthcare dollars and also improve access. And then in the glaucoma domain, uh, could the first exam, could the first presentation of the patient help uh, in a, say, project the trajectory of the patient's disease. And so uh, Dr. Yohanan has looked at this in detail and identified opportunities to say, okay, if there's baseline measurements that can be taken, can we pre-identify those patients at greatest risk for rapid onset glaucoma and provide interventions and also a pathway of treatment to them that is, is more relevant and customized to what their disease presentation might be in the future. And thus far, his predictions have been 90% accurate, and he's been working with a data set over a 1 million visual field test. I, I think what's most exciting about it is the fact that, again, we're learning new correlations that we didn't know existed before. And so I think through the algorithm, there's additional factors that we're learning about that we never thought were implicated in the manifestation or presentation of eye disease that we're now finding and then able to study to find out why uh, perhaps those linkages exist. What I will say, I think I want to posit on and focus on various challenges with AI. So one of them, I think, has to do with integration. So in 2013 onwards, Johns Hopkins Medicine has been working towards consolidation of 153 uh, clinical systems, distinct clinical systems across departments into a singular electronic health record. However, in the artificial intelligence world, a lot of the development of technology is going to happen in the startup world or the startup-like world. And so how do we harness that AI technology in a system that we already have, that we've already invested in? I think number two, it's sensitivity, specificity, and also precision. And so institutions like ours and yours uh, have the challenge of, of caring for the most complex patients in the world, um, also seeing the rarest diseases. And, and while that's all well and good, do we have the depth and breadth of data to be able to develop algorithms that are, again, relevant and applicable to the entire field? And finally, uh, how do we balance you know, the challenge of, or the pressure for automation and, and, and really taking physicians out of the role of diagnostic while still carrying over to the next generation the, school, the skills and the techniques that are required uh, for basic ophthalmic competencies. And so that's, that's a challenge we've been working through and certainly look forward to collaborating with you.